Thank you, and now we would like to also welcome our radio audience, live radio on KFLR. We welcome all of you on Family Life Radio who've joined us for worship, along with the TV 39 audience and these many that have gathered in the worship center tonight. Let me ask you that you would understand that there's not a place in the presentation of the music for applause until the end. It would just be better if we waited until that time, if we would like to applaud the entire uh, performance at that time and to thank the Lord and praise the Lord for it. And uh, all of those who sing and play during the uh, presentation will appreciate that. I would also like to ask you that there not be flash pictures taken. It disturbs people around you. It'd be better that we not do that. And let's have as uh, little of moving in and out of the building as is absolutely made necessary by emergency. Let's just worship together, please, for the next 40 minutes or so as God gives direction in our lives. It is my great privilege to present to you the music ministry of North Phoenix Baptist Church. The musical direction of the instrumental music is under the direction of Mr. Jim Hellman. You've been listening to the orchestra under his direction. And our minister of music who will give direction to the choir and to the musicians tonight as they present a son, a savior, is Mr. John Shillington. Would you welcome John and the musicians at this time, please? At the very heart of Christmas is the birth 
of Jesus. Every card we send, every carol we sing, every treasured tradition of the season is another way of remembering Him. The gifts we exchange recall to us God's gift of a Savior to the world. The songs and carols retell the good news of His birth. Even the Christmas tree, as we decorate its branches with light and color, remind us of Him whose coming into the world has brought color and light into our lives. In the midst of the rush and busyness of trimming trees and wrapping gifts, it's good to pull away from the confusion of Christmas to quietly reflect on the meaning behind it all, to wonder at the miracle of what God has done. God became man. How often we have heard that, and yet how little we understand it. For how could we comprehend the heart of a God who loves so deeply he was willing to become a part of his own creation. Hear now the parable of the shepherd's heart, for in it we can see the heart of God. The time is evening. The place, a grassy hillside. The shepherd's heart is heavy as he looks with love at his ragged flock. It's been a treacherous day. One wayward sheep has led several others over a rocky cliff to their death, and though he now has herded them into safety for the evening, he knows too well that this kind of tragedy will probably happen again. If only I could be one of them, the shepherd muses. If only I could speak their language and warn them of the dangers, and convince them that the only way to safety through these hills is to follow me. He closes his weary eyes and begins to imagine what it would be like to come into his own flock as a newborn lamb. Oh, my God. 
2,000 years ago, in a remote desert village, to an unknown Jewish couple, a child was born, changing forever the history of the human heart. For God so loved his fallen creation that he was not content to remain outside of our suffering. He opened his heart of love and sent forth a son, a savior. <laughs> God had revealed the good news of the Messiah's coming to both Mary and Joseph long before it actually had happened. He had sent his own messenger, an angel, to prepare their hearts. And though they knew ahead of time what was to take place on that Bethlehem night, they must have looked upon it all with a sense of wonder. The Bible tells us that Mary was pensive and quiet that night, thinking and wondering over all that had happened. Perhaps she was also pondering what feelings and emotions might be in the heart of her young husband. Ah. I 
wonder what he's thinking now. His eyes are much more peaceful now the baby's here. Even though the future is still a bit unclear, I wonder what he's thinking now. I wonder. I wonder what she feels inside To think of all she's been through And still to see her face What a quiet picture of gentleness and grace I wonder what she feels inside I wonder but oh, the greatest wonder given from above, the only one of Israel has set his son above. By far the greatest wonder God has ever done is a sleeping miracle sent to be. called to witness the wonder of his birth, but through the lives of those few who were called, God made certain that all of us were represented. Jewish shepherds were called away from their work that night to be witnesses. They represented God's chosen people to whom the child had been promised. Gentile kings were also called to be witnesses. They represented all of those who had once been considered outside the realm of God's mercy, but who would now be brought into his grace through the newborn king. All of the hosts of heaven were represented that night too by the multitudes of angels who filled that silent night with incredible hymns of glory. Oh, no. 
unlike any other king ever born, Jesus Christ came not to deal with or rule over the masses. Instead, he came to touch and change the lives of individuals to give eternal life in him. Because he became one of us, he knows what it is to be a human being. The pain, the loneliness, and the suffering. Outside the door of every human heart, he stands waiting for a chance to enter and bring with him healing and wholeness, power and purpose. This then is the very heart of Christmas that beats beneath the trimmings and traditions that for all who receive him, Jesus comes to bring new life.
we want you to enter into our phrase now. You'll find in your programs the words to some of our favorite Christmas songs. Let's sing together. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. the words to the first Noel, the angel did say, ladies, you'll sing the first part of the verse. his name together for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace and now let us worship his majesty
presented the message Jesus is the heart of it all the most important question that man has ever faced is not whether God sent his son for that is fact and not if his son can save for that is certain nor is the question is the son of God Jesus at the heart of it all the only question is do you individually have Jesus in your heart is he Lord is he Savior is he shepherd is he king Jesus God's son awesome as it is came to be your personal Savior and mine the choir has asked me to ask you if you know Jesus Christ God's Son as your Savior to make a new commitment to allow Jesus to be at the heart of everything that you do and say not only at this season but throughout the year and if Jesus has not become your personal Savior we would like for you to invite him now into your heart as your Savior and your Lord would you bow with me and with us for a moment of prayer and in the quietness of this moment as you focus upon the things of faith if there has never been a time in your life when for a certainty you have received God's Son as your Savior would you not now recognize honestly your sin and your need realizing that God never would have sent his son had there not been need for a Savior man cannot be saved from nothing he must be saved from something and the Bible says that something is sin that has separated us from God and God sent his son to save us from that sin you and I have all sinned and come short of the glory of God that sin bears its wages which is death but God says he would not have us reap those wages but would instead give us the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord tonight if you would pray and say God I'm a sinner and I know it and I'm sorry and I know there's nothing I can do to save myself I've tried but God the best I know how by faith I believe that Jesus is your son who died to be my Savior on Calvary's cross and who arose from the grave to live in my life and God I not only thank you that you sent him to Bethlehem's manger but that you've given him to live in my heart Lord Jesus come into my heart forgive me cleanse me save me I trust you now and friend if you in this worship center or beyond this worship center would pray that kind of prayer of faith God's Son will be your Savior right now we will pause just a moment as our staff ministers come to stand in the altar of the church and as God's Holy Spirit speaks to your heart to invite you if you would receive Christ as your Savior and confess him as your Lord to stand to your feet and slip into an aisle and come to this altar and say to one of these ministers and to a counselor who will pray with you I want to trust Jesus as my Savior and my Lord or perhaps you've already invited Christ into your heart and you know that Jesus said that we should confess him before others and you come and say I want to confess Christ and perhaps some of you have been saved and not baptized or saved and baptized but do not have membership in God's church and he's called you here in this moment we give you an opportunity to honor God's Son your Savior in a personal open unashamed decision of faith if those between you and the aisle will let you by and pray for you would you just stand and slip into the aisle and come and say now I want God's Son to be my Savior from the balcony you can come to your right and to your left there are stairs that lead here as many did last evening would you come tonight and trust Jesus Christ and commit your life to him if you'd like to come and ask someone to pray with you about how you can be a Christian you don't have to know any magic words to say any verses to quote just come 
in your need and say, I want Jesus in my life. And God will bless you as you come. We wait this moment. You stand if you would. Slip into the aisle and come quietly. And God bless you as you do. I would remind you that there never is a service at North Phoenix Baptist Church where we do not invite people to come to Jesus. And even as some are coming now, we encourage you to stand and join them and come and share your commitment to Christ. If you're worshiping with us by television, you can pick up your phone and dial the number on the screen. The number is 264-3939 and there will be someone to share with you the gospel of Christ. These that are coming will go immediately to the prayer rooms. And let me mention to you that even after this service has ended, there will be prayer warriors, counselors that will be here to pray with you about any spiritual need that's in your life. And if you will come now or come at the close of the service to either side of this altar, there will be a minister and a counselor to share with you. People are coming from all across the building even now. And we invite you to come also and share in their commitments. Making your commitment to God's Son, your Savior. As the choir continues to lead us in worship, the ministers and the counselors will be available. And even at the end of the hour, there will be those of us in this altar to help you with your spiritual decision to trust Christ. Will you worship with us now as the musicians and the choir lead us into our final expression of praise? with us tonight let me mention to you just before you go 
that we will have other special Christmas services here at North Phoenix this coming Sunday evening, the 20th, at 7 o'clock, our annual Hanging of the Green and Carol Sing, featuring all of the musicians in our church, the little fellows and all. A wonderful choir evening and time we all share together. We invite you to be with us on Sunday morning if you do not have a church home. If your church doesn't meet on Sunday night, come for the Hanging of the Green. You will be blessed. And then on Christmas Eve, on Thursday night, the 24th, our great candlelight observance of baptism and the supper of our Lord. It's become for 21 times now, this will be our 21st service like this together, a tradition that we enjoy and a worship service that we are blessed by. We'll have someone to help you get off the parking lots and into the traffic flow. Just take a moment. In less than 10 minutes, the parking lots will empty. Don't be in too big a hurry. Visit with us before you leave if you can. Try not to rush and get a fender bender. And may God give you a safe journey home. God bless you. Thank you. And good evening.